What do you say we check back in on the ranch? This is a true masterpiece, no less than culinary art. Wow, that would be grilled rapig. What? Whoa there, what's the big brouhaha? It's rapig! How could you cook something with such cute little eyes? What'd it ever do to you? I fail to see what the problem is. Rapigs are perfectly edible creatures. <laughs> Having said that, I do realize it's become rather rare to eat them lately. What with people increasingly embracing them as pets and companions. They definitely didn't fall out of fashion to eat because of their flavor, that's for sure. Agreed. Rapigs have tender, fatty meat. The taste can take some getting used to, but I would argue that's part of its charm. If the taste is too strong, I imagine you can either just cook it thoroughly or simmer it with some herbs to mask it. Indeed. At first I wasn't sure whether to smoke it with spices or simmer it in water, but I opted to grill it as is instead. Seriously, Dolhalim? You have the weirdest tastes! That's probably because when you live the life of a lord, you grow tired of most ordinary cuisine. So you end up seeking out more unusual food. I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, putting aside what it used to be, you've gotta admit it does look pretty damn good. Meat is meat after all. That reminds me. I do believe I once read in a book about rare delicacies, how one can go about preparing an owl. <laughs> I suppose I won't have the chance to try it anytime soon. No, with Hoodle you won't!
thought we'd find answers on Lenigus, but we just ended up finding more questions. You can say that again. And now we have more problems to fix, too. Like figuring out how to reform Lenigus. That can wait for now. We've got more than enough on our plates to deal with as it is. Like figuring out who's really running the show on Rena. Yeah. Which is why we're going to the Renan homeworld. All the answers we've been looking for are on that planet. The person responsible for all this. The Red Woman and the Renis Alma. The answers have to be there. Are we prepared to finally find them? So, what do we do first when we get there? We know nothing about the Renan homeworld or what we might face once we arrive. We should get a feel for how things are on the ground before we take any serious steps. It's also entirely possible that the first thing we're going to face is an attack. If we come across a capital, we should- <coughs> What? Damn! The hell just happened? Our course has been altered. The coordinates are pointing to a different destination. What's that? The ship's controls aren't accepting my commands. The engine is being shut down. That's bad, right? Quite bad. We've lost control of the ship. Is all of this the Red Women's doing? Are they trying to finish us off before we can land? <laughs> Everyone! Look there! A flower blooming out of Retta? But that flower looks like it's absorbing all of Dennis' energy. And it appears Lenigus is serving as a conduit for that energy to reach here. Could that have been its true purpose all along? If that's true, do you think the people back on Lenigus are all right? <sighs> we can only pray that they are. Damn it! Haven't they taken enough already? When is this going to end? 
flower of oblivion. With everything that's happening, we need to get back to Lenigus. Is the ship still offline? Unfortunately, yes. Even more so than when it lay dormant. Can you fix it? Starships are extremely complex machines. One wrong move while we're out here in space could very well cost us our lives. So what? We're just stuck inside here, floating around? For how long? <laughs> I don't believe this. We've made it all this way, and now we're stuck here? We're watching Dana die before our eyes, and we have no choice but to sit here and starve to death? Law, calm down! You're not the only one who's worried here. Right. Sorry. It's still too early to give up. There has to be a way to get out of this. Alfin. Ah! Now what? The starship, it... it's back online? No, this is different. Something is pulling our ship in towards it. We managed to get moving, but where are we? It looks like Lenigus in here. Do you think we might run into more Renans here? Or those Red Women? Perhaps. Someone brought us here. The question is, who? We haven't been ambushed, so that probably means they aren't hostile. Still, why would anyone want to bring us here? Uh, hey, Shion! If they wanted to attack us, they could have done so while we were back on the starship. We should see where this path takes us. Ah, Shion, just in the nick of time. Here, lend me a hand while I... No! What the... Oh, right. The thorns. <laughs> My bad. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I overreacted. Again, Law? Can't you even go a minute without putting your foot in your mouth? Seriously, it's fine. I'd rather that than people feeling like they're walking on eggshells around me. Besides, I'm the one who should be vigilant about not touching you guys, not the other way around. Actually, I've been meaning to ask. Not being able to touch people... Does it ever get lonely sometimes? I guess I never really thought about it in those terms. It was either accept it for what it was, or come undone. Before long, it was just part of my everyday reality. I think I even forgot there was another way to live. Which isn't to say I didn't feel alone. I did. Always. So numb to your reality, you couldn't even recognize it as loneliness? I don't know how you managed. It's fine. I know I'm not alone anymore. But... I can't even touch you. No way of lending you a shoulder when you're down. Even Alfin. I appreciate the concern. Until I get rid of these thorns... I guess I'll have to put up with it just a little longer, but not forever. Alfin promised me that. Maybe it'll be soon, maybe it won't be. But either way, the day will come. And I'll be ready when it does. Yeah, just hang in there. One day, we'll share a big warm hug. You'll see. I promise. Ah! Boo! Ah! What the? <laughs> 
Are you out of your mind? This isn't the time for games, Rinwell. Oh, come on. How am I supposed to resist with you looking all jittery like that? It's called experiencing feelings appropriate to the situation. You ought to try it sometime. Yeah, but seeing you act all nervous, you're making me start to feel nervous, too. Woo! Uh, oh, sorry. Staying alert is important, but too much caution can cloud your judgment. Try to strike a balance. I still can't get over what we saw happening outside the starship. Yeah, our planet's really not doing too hot right about now. I've only ever seen Rena from the surface of Dana, so I figured it was just another round planet like ours. Still though, I never would have imagined Rena actually looked like that. And what's the deal with that giant flower coming out of it? Beats me. I have absolutely no clue. It's so surreal. It looks like a broken egg or something. Rena and Dana. We were taught that both worlds were spherical bodies that floated amongst the stars in the heavens. But to think that they lied to us not only about the Sovereign and the Crown Contest, but also the form of our own planet. Dohalim. Okay, who's the wise guy that summoned us here? Someone formidable enough to bring our starship along with us. They must be here somewhere. Let's find them. That beam of light joining Dana and Rena. It was the Renan side that it first came from, right? That's what it looked like. And then the Danan side responded. Perhaps it was some kind of directive from the Renan homeworld? To reawaken the Wedge and Lenigus? Which would mean that whoever's behind all this is on Rena after all. But what are they after? Is it really worth going through all this trouble just to steal Dana's energy? Try to stay calm. With so many factors we don't understand, dwelling on it won't get us anywhere. <sighs> what is it? No, it's just... Zephyr once told me the same thing. So much for me making progress, huh? You made it this far, didn't you? You notice something, you change it. That's all anyone can do. But you can't stand still in the meantime. This place looks a lot like that room we saw back in the Forbidden Zone. Huh? What's that? Ah, it's one of those! A red woman in disguise. Or is this their true form? So it was a trap? It doesn't look like it can move. Tell me, are you the one who brought us here? That is correct. It is unusual for me to have unexpected guests these days. It can talk. 
What are you? Hevrecht 35. Hevrecht 35? Is that your name? Correct. What is this place? No, wait, before that, just what exactly are you? Are you somehow associated with the Red Women? Before I answer, I have a question for you. How did you all arrive in this sector? We did not come to this place by choice. Our ship was brought here against our will, by a group of red women who can shift into the same form as you. In that case, we can assume my brethren who serve the Great Spirit have deemed you all to be a threat most grave. What do you mean, serve? Are you saying there really is someone more powerful than the red women, pulling their strings? What did you do to us? I examined your bodies. You have not been harmed in any way. Identifiers detected. The Sovereign and Maiden are among you. However, you aren't under its control. I see why they viewed you as a danger now. Oh goody, more riddles. Do you think we can trust this thing? Like it or not, it may be our best chance at a ticket out of here. Let's at least hear it out. I shall now answer your questions. We are Helganquil. The red women you encountered previously are a form of disguise we employ from time to time, but not our true form. Helganquil? You are on Dake Faisal, a celestial base which drifted here by accident. The will of Rena's great spirit no longer reaches us here. Since my sudden separation from the great spirit's influence, I have used any and all means to extend my lifespan. As I have done so, I have also set out to monitor and research Rena and Dana from this position. A question. What is this great spirit of which you speak? Is it something that rules over your kind? Correct. The great astral spirit is a large mass of astral energy that fills all of Rena, one with its own will, a voice we cannot refuse. A voice? Just like Dana. The voice of the great spirit speaks to our hearts directly, and we have served it without question throughout the ages. Does that mean it was controlling your minds? Wait a second. Could this great spirit be the true sovereign of Rena? The true ruler of Rena? It could be the same thing that's controlling Volron. Wait, back up. You're telling us this great spirit of yours is the one that ordered you things to harvest the astral energy from Dana? I'm not sure I believe that. Why not? We've already made contact with the will of Dana back in the Wedge, and in the Forbidden Zone on Lenegas. If Dana has a will of its own, I don't see why Rena wouldn't. Maybe not, but think about what you're saying. If Dana has a will like Rena, then that would mean that we've been controlled by the voice of Dana this whole time, just like these things. Dana's will hasn't been forcing us to do anything. Yeah, but... Let's assume that what Hevrecht 35 claims is true, and that we are indeed cut off from both planets. Even if we had previously been under the control of Dana's will, we would have noticed now that we are disconnected. Your fear is not based in logic. The voice of Dana is much smaller and quieter compared to that of Rena's great spirit. Rena's astral energy is amassed at its center, whereas Dana's is shared among all its constituents. So thinly is that energy spread that it cannot coalesce and formulate a will. Our findings here indicate as much. Which explains why we felt its will where we did. The Wedge and Lenegus are where so much of that energy had been accumulated. The Great Spirit's desire is to consume all astral energy. And the pursuit of that desire is why you see Rena in its current state. As a result, it has turned its attention toward Dana. Is that why the crown contest is necessary? 
so that the Great Spirit can feed off of Dana? Indeed, and it was to that end that we Helganquil devised the Crown Contest. Had the initial spirit channeling from 300 years ago succeeded, all of Dana's astral energy would have been seized. <sighs> but the ceremony failed. Lenigus was severely damaged, and you lost both the Sovereign and the Renesalma. Correct. A change in plan was required to ensure the spirit channeling success. However, recreating the Renis Alma required a vast amount of energy. That is why we turned to Dana. So that was the real purpose behind the Crown Contest. An efficient means to harvest the necessary energy from Dana. This is all happening because of me. Nevertheless, you still haven't answered one of Alfin's original questions. Just why have you brought us here to your base, Hevrecht 35? First, it was to confirm the identities of you, my unexpected visitors. Second, it was to ascertain whether you would be likely to accept my request. A request? But what could someone like you want us to... I wish for you all to slay the Great Spirit. I'm sorry, did you just ask us to kill your master? I did. It is in your best interest that you do so, I might add. What makes you say that? Lenigus has entered the final stage of the spirit channeling plan. As we speak, Dana's energy is being harvested en masse and transmitted to Rena. If nothing is done about the Great Spirit, it will not be long before all is lost. You're saying the destruction we saw earlier is just the beginning? That... We won't let that happen. Why do you want us to kill the Great Spirit so badly? Is it to save our world? To free you, Helganquil, from under its control? Why? No. My primary concern is validating our findings and analysis which have taken many years to realize. As such, it is my desire to see how your actions impact and change these systems. However, I will not deny that vengeance also plays a part. Vengeance? For what? In spite of our long service to the Great Spirit, our species is on the brink of extinction. You mean... you're dying? At this stage, it would be wise for you to talk with the others. Ask them what you need to know. Once you have your answer, return to me. If you agree to help, I shall fix your ship. Others? Just how many of you are there? I am the only Helganquil who inhabits Dake Faisal. Hey! Hey! It's no use. I think it's done talking to us. Let's take a look around. You can't seriously be buying anything that creature told us, right? I mean, it's practically blackmailing us into doing its dirty work. To be honest, the conversation went on for so long, I'm not sure I understood all of it. How about you, Dohalim? Were you able to follow it at all? At the very least, everything it said about the Renan Great Spirit adds up. At the end of the day, this whole chain of events comes back to astral energy. That being said, had we not previously encountered the will of Dana, I suspect I would find its story much more difficult to believe. The spirit of Rena wants to see Dana completely destroyed. But why? Astral energy is supposed to be a force that creates and shapes the world. It doesn't matter. 
I don't care if we're up against an entire world or what its game is. We're not going to let it destroy Dana. Right. There is one other thing that concerns me. How the Great Spirit, the Helganquil, and the Crown Contest are all part of a centuries-long plan is clear enough. But what about the Renans? How do they factor into all this? Oh. Now that you mention it, and all that talk, Hevrek 35 never even brought up the Renans once. And as for the Helganquil, we never did find out just what they are either. Maybe it had a reason for keeping its silence. Or perhaps there's even more going on. Maybe the others will shed more light on the matter. Let's find out. Who are they? Hmm... W what is it? Oh, my apologies. It's just been so long since I've seen any humans from the outside world. Are you a Renan? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Hmm? <laughs> the Overseer told us to answer any questions you might have. Whatever you want to know, we'll tell you as much as we can. But be quick. Our subjects are undergoing a dramatic shift that we don't want to miss. What a weird guy. He must have meant Hevrecht 35 when he mentioned that overseer. And what was that about subjects? You don't think he meant Dana and Rena, do you? There isn't anyone else we can talk to. I guess we should ask around here. Have you guys lived up here in Dig Faisal with Hevrek 35 for a long time? Yes. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head just how long it's been, though. We regularly go into stasis, so our sense of time has gotten rather out of whack over the years. Why are you all even here in the first place? Originally, this station was where we worked to perform maintenance on Lenegas from the outside. We heard that the facility ended up in its current location due to an accident. Oh, it was terrible. Apparently, there was some kind of accident, and when help never arrived, they presumed the entire facility had been destroyed. And you've been working for Hevrecht 35 ever since? Well, at first we thought that there was nobody else inside the facility, but then it turned out the Overseer was there all along. What do you mean? The Helganquil have the technology to cloak themselves around us Renans. As long as they don't do anything obvious, a Renan won't see one, even if it's right in front of them. Which would explain why Xion and I failed to notice the Red Women previously. Do they employ an astral art of some sort? I haven't been able to scientifically confirm it for myself, but from what I understand, the type of cloaking they use is primarily achieved through mechanical means. In addition, they also used hypnosis devices and information control to get us to do what they wanted without being detected. It's a pretty sophisticated operation, especially since it avoids any unnecessary conflict. I have to imagine that's how Lenegas is still run. But aren't the Helganquil themselves controlled by the Great Spirit? If so, why aren't Renans affected by it in the same way? The Great Spirit's mind control only works on Helganquil. So they had to employ other means to manipulate us Renans. You act like this didn't affect you personally. If I was you, I'd be mad as hell at their deceptions. I mean, sure, I was surprised when I first found out about it, but it happened so long ago. Hevrek 35 has clearly ceased concealing itself, though. Why is that? Who can say? My guess is it just got bored or 
maybe even a little lonely. Don't you want to go back home to Rena or Lenigus? Our ship is going to be fixed pretty soon. You could ride with us. No way. If we went back after knowing the truth, they'd either just brainwash us or purge us outright. After all this time, there's nothing to be gained from going back. We've all agreed it'd be best to simply stay here and watch everything unfold instead. Things are going just fine with the Overseer. Not that it'll be around much longer. It can't extend its life any further. That said, I'm sure it's pleased to see the final stage of the plan before it passes on, though. Thank you for answering our questions. Can we talk to you for a few minutes? Sure. It's going to be a while before the two planets undergo their next shift, so I can talk until then. Please, tell us what you know about the Helganquil. You mean the Overseer's species? I can't say I know much about them. Well, for starters, where'd they come from? <laughs> Where else? From Rena, obviously. From Rena? Wait, are you telling us those things live right alongside the Renans down there? Of course not. There's really no such thing as Renans in the first place. Excuse me? Oh, I thought the Overseer explained everything. Apparently not. Please, tell us more. Well, in a nutshell, the Renans were originally created from Danans by the Helganquil. <laughs> But if that's true, then that would mean there aren't any people on Rena. There aren't. But there are Helganquil. That's what the name literally means in their language. People of Rena. But what need could they possibly have to create a whole new race of people? It was a way to bolster their dwindling workforce. I trust you're aware that the Helganquil are on the verge of extinction, yes? In essence, we were created to carry on their work for the Great Spirit after they all die. They gathered Danans who had an affinity for astral arts and proceeded from there. That's why we, as their descendants, can all cast arts, albeit to varying degrees. Let me get this straight. Are you saying Renans were originally created from Danans that the Helganquil kidnapped? Wait, that explains why almost nobody can use astral arts on Dana now. Helganquil technology is truly amazing. The way they alter their bodies is far less invasive than your conventional surgeries. They have these tiny machines that are practically invisible, which they insert into their bodies and- Enough, you needn't tell us anymore. How can you speak so calmly about all of this? I guess I can see how when viewed in a certain light, their ways may sound grotesque, but if you ask me, I think they ultimately did us a favor. They saved us from crawling the earth in ignorance. If it meant their hands had to get a little dirty in the process, then so be it. Anyway, the Helganquil are the real Renans. Personally, I don't think it's such a big deal. They're also mostly the ones behind what you see going on between the two planets. I think that covers just about everything worth knowing. I see. Thanks for filling us in. Does he really expect us to believe that Renans never truly existed? How absurd. Dohalim. Just when I think we're getting to the bottom of it all, some new revelation smacks us in the face. Then let's hope this is our last revelation for a while. Do you know anything about a spirit channeling plan? If you mean the first plan from 300 years ago, then yes. Do you know what its main objective was? Yes. It was to use Lenigus to siphon off Dana's astral energy and send it to Rena. Exactly. However, there were two problems we had to consider. First was how to collect and send such a large quantity of astral energy without it becoming sentient. Second, we had to figure out how to convert Dana's energy so it would be compatible with Rena. 
I take it the solutions to those problems were to use the Wedge for the collection, and then the Sovereign and Maiden to convert the energy. We have a winner! However, the first plan failed when the Sovereign was overwhelmed and became frenzied. <sighs> the reason for that is because the Maiden lost control. I'm told he slaughtered many Renans in Helganquil that day. <sighs> for the next plan, we tried to recreate the Renis Alma, but we didn't have nearly enough of the other non-dark astral energy types. To amend that, we set our sights on Dana, and implemented a system whereby we could extract energy from it. And the crown contest began. Correct. Since the Maiden had been the failing point in the previous plan, it was decided to replace her role with machinery to avoid further mishaps. A new sovereign had to be made as well. It was such tremendously difficult work, its success was dubious. But from the look of things, it would appear such worries were unfounded. So that's what the purpose of that room we found in the Forbidden Zone was. What about the flower that sprouted from Rena? Flower? Oh, that thing. That's the physical manifestation of all the astral energy that's been harvested from Dana. As I'm sure you've noticed, it's quite a lot of energy. At this point, it's likely that it's become physically integrated with Rena's planetary structure. Hevrecht 35 mentioned that the spirit channeling plan is entering its final stage. Is that true? It is. I never thought I would live to see the day with my own eyes. And yet here we are. Are we done talking now? If it's all the same to you, I'd really rather not miss anything that's about to happen. He talks like the potential end of the world is just another day on the job. You've got to remember that these guys have been living alone up here for a long time. Who knows what shape their minds are in? It feels like our whole world has been turned upside down. Is there anything we know that's still true at this point? Seriously, I'm still trying to process the fact that we Renans were created by the Helganquil, let alone the Sovereign and Maiden stuff. Let's take a moment to gather ourselves. I know all of this is a lot to believe and take in, but... I think it's fair to say that we've found the answers we've been looking for. Does everyone agree? Agreed. Though I'll admit that I never expected it to all boil down to Rena's great spirit being behind everything. Everything that's happened, everything we've endured, it's all because of astral energy. And to get that energy, the Great Spirit took control of the Helganquil. Then the Helganquil created the Renans, who went on to invade and rule over the Danans. Plus, the reason the Great Spirit can't directly control the Renans as well is likely because they were originally Danans all along. <laughs> Either way, I think it's fair to say we've all had a lot to take in at once. Maybe too much, even. We should probably take it easy and rest our minds a bit. Why don't we all take some time to think things over, before we decide on our next move? That's a good idea, Kisara. If the Renan Great Spirit really is behind all this, then we've got a really big fight ahead of us. Because it's not just Dana on the line, but Rena too. If we're going to do this, we need to be completely sure of ourselves. So let's go ahead and break off for now. We aren't in any immediate danger, so we should be okay. You sure you don't want to be alone right now? I could ask you the same question. I figured I'd get all my thinking in while walking around and checking up on everybody. I'll go along with you. I'm interested to hear what's on everyone's minds, too. Sounds good. Let's go find them. Everyone's just gone their own way, huh? Yeah. Let's hit up each spot. 